Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Now, before we get started, if you're enjoying the knowledge nuggets I'm dropping in my shows and just digging what I'm screaming here, then make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and spread the word to all your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Now, before I get into the actual wine, what wine are we going to do today? So uh, a friend of mine who works for the importer slash distributor for this wine uh, gave me this to do for a review. It is the 2016 Chateau d'Auriac. And uh, so, yeah, so let's get in to some background while I show you some really cool Google Earth footage. All right, so Chateau d'Auriac is part of the company Les Vendes de Cru. The video you're seeing right now is where the company is currently located in the city of Bordeaux. It was founded in 1975 by Herman Mostermann and Michael Moss. They were export directors in a large Bordeaux company at the time. The site doesn't mention which one though. They partnered with the Pratt's family who at the time owned the super second Côte d'Estrenel and Marbuzet at Petit Village. In 2001, Herman's son Theodore and Antoine Darquet bought the company. In 2009, they moved to the Bruges section of the city of Bordeaux and built new cellars and offices. They expanded in 2014. Now, Theodore was the commercial director of Chateau Giscor, Chateau du Tet, and is the owner of Chateau Moulin Iquem and Chateau Marciac. Antoine Darquet was with a large negotiant company in Bordeaux for 10 years prior to joining the company. He also runs the property Chateau Tessier. Now, according to the site, they produced 2.5 million bottles in 2011. Uh, the, the, which is the most recent data, and exported 70% of the production to 40 countries. The site lists 31 wineries, including this wine. Not sure how, the, how up to date that list is. Uh, it does include some of the wineries I already mentioned earlier, plus some others. It also includes Opus One. It's not that they own it. They basically just act as an importer in this case. Now, the actual winery is located in the town of saint seron de Cadorn. It is located in an area called the Haute Medoc or Upper Medoc. Not sure which vineyards are theirs exactly. I'll make an assumption, an assumption, I don't know it's dangerous, that there are the 20 hectares close by, possibly across the street from them. Le Vent de Cru is technically a negotiant of Chateau d'Auriac, and the winery is owned by Dutchman Eric Newall, or Newall. He bought it in 1983. All right, so here are the stats for the 2016 Chateau d'Auriac. Our suggested retail price is $35. It's a Cru Bourgeois. That is basically one step below the classified gross that you will hear us talk about, right? It is 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 44% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc, and 3% Petit Verdot. The average vine age is 12 years. They call the length of vatting, which is basically maceration, 21 to 30 days. It's aged for 12 months in barrel, which 35% is new. I'm assuming French. The soil is a clay gravel sand com uh, composite, and it's, like I said, already 20 hectares. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the wine. By the way, you like? Yeah, I got tired of the beard, considering the beard was kind of a joke, kind of like a little fun thing I was doing calling it a study beard. And since the earliest I can take the advanced sommelier exam would be March of 2022 instead of March of 2021, I didn't feel like keeping the beard for another 15 to 20 some odd months. Because, uh, you know, either March, July, or October of 2022 would be the next opportunity for me to take the exam. And since I have a day job and you wear a mask about eight hours a day, Beards just suck with masks, just in general. So back to my clean shaven self and got a haircut too the day I shaved. So I can already smell the wine and I'm pretty excited to do this. I love Bordeaux. I don't drink enough of it. Though I actually have some cool Bordeaux here, but a lot of it actually is 10 plus 
years of age or older. So I kind of don't just want to open it up as an everyday wine. But then again, I don't want to only just bring it to tasting group. So every time I bring an old wine, it's Bordeaux or an old red. Anyway, so let's just get into this. Wow, it kind of smells like a winery. I really smell like pretty ripe, like blackberry on that, like a, like a blackberry jam or compote. But I also smell a little funkiness. You know, a good friend of mine says, if it smells like, it must be French. So it has a little bit of funk to it, but you know, it honestly smells a, a little carbonic, which I'm sure is not the case here. Anyway, let's, let's really kind of swirl a little bit. Maybe get some, I guess some bark, some like dark chocolate, some bitter chocolate, get a little caramel, butterscotch, some vanilla, blackberry, black raspberry, touch of tobacco. Let's see how it tastes. So it tastes really good. While it's a not quite 50-50 blend of Cab and Merlot, with the Cab you know, also, you know, being 50% and the Merlot being 44%, I really feel like the Cab is definitely driving the bus. It should because it's the majority grape in the blend, but you really get that dryness, that extra bit of grip that Cab really brings to a wine rather than uh, the Merlot. But I do get this like a bit of like chocolate mint to it. So I'm going to attribute that to, well, it's just Bordeaux varieties. It's not necessarily a quote green pyrazine, green or bell pepper, but there is a little bit of a mint quality, which is something you can, you can also get from these varieties. that appearance of carbonic on the nose is, well, it's gone on the nose now, and it's nowhere near present on the palate. So I might've been misidentifying, I probably was misidentifying something as far as on the nose, but there is a freshness, a little bit of brightness of red fruit. It was mostly dark, like black fruits at first, but there was just kind of this brighter fruit, red fruit that was coming through. And it kind of comes through that on the palate. It's very delicious, it's very mouthwatering, but it's dry. Like the fruit quality on the palate isn't like ripe or isn't like overripe, okay? It's like just ripe. Like if I, if I was doing a blind, I would hope to be saying that this was uh, just ripe or slightly underripe quality on the fruit on the palate, um, especially if I was like, the fruit was more of a ripe nature on the nose and then finishing off on a drier side which would then lead me to Old World, which then if I'm identifying everything that's in here as being basically a Cabernet Sauvignon based wine can only take me to one place, which is Bordeaux in the whole testable world. There's a little bit of funk though on the nose, a little bit of poopiness, not a lot, just, just a touch, which I'm fine with. A little dirt. Some nice grip on the palate. The tannins are really there. The tannins are really there like on the, on the gums, but on the flavor profile, there's a bit of bark or a little, you know, like, like tree bark kind of thing, wood. Uh, it'll get a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of cedar box, that kind of stuff. That green, that mint is there, but there's also a bit of fern, a little bit of like that type of, of um, leafy quality, a greeny, green leafy quality to it. Definitely uh, a good wine. Definitely a wine that would be best to do with food. 
Um, I totally could drink it. I did not mention the alcohol when I did the stats. Um, it is 14%. And the reason I looked at that one, I didn't say what the alcohol was. But when I tasted it, I was like, it's kind of got a little bit of alcohol to it. And I was like, oh, I didn't put the alcohol down. So 14%. So it's it's kind of on the upper end of things that, that are um, Bordeaux or Old World. But it's good. It's, it's integrated. It's not like it's not like unbalanced or anything like that. It's just like, oh, you kind of notice it. This is definitely a Bordeaux style wine because it's from Bordeaux. But if I was not knowing what it was ahead of time, I could see this being potentially a new world Cabernet Sauvignon or cab blend that was made in an older world style because there is that ripeness of fruit and there is that kind of elevated alcohol. Now, 16, if I remember correctly, was a pretty hot vintage. Uh, 15 and 16 were pretty hot. So you're going to get that riper fruit from Bordeaux. Anyway, it's a good wine. And uh, you know, if you're into, if you're into Bordeaux uh, and you can, you can drop 35, 36 some odd dollars, you should seek this out. So, I mean, it's in Oat Medoc, so a little bit farther north on the Medoc, but it's also in a, a higher level part of, of Bordeaux. You have the Medoc and they have the Oat Medoc. And being a Cru Bourgeois, that also uh, means we're getting to like that just, just underneath the, the uh, classified growth level. So you're getting good quality. That's one of the reasons why it's priced the way it is, because it deserves to be the price that way. So yeah, that's going to be today's show. So again, if, uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell your friends. And then until next time, we'll see you later.